So uh, the devil does not devour everybody, but the devil wants to devour everybody. It's a desire. Now, the Bible says in John, all right, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right? The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. You see, we need to know that we have an enemy, Satan, and his job is to steal, his job is to kill, his job is to destroy. You see, until we appreciate that, then we do not appreciate the journey that we have to do in life. So when it comes to the health of our family and our health, we must perceive Satan as seeking as an occasion. All right? Satan would always seek an occasion. Now, John 10.10 10 does not stop there. Of course, there's another side to it. We say, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In essence... Satan seeks a thing, God seeks a thing. But these realities contend for our reality. So God is seeking something. Satan is seeking something. I have the permission to allow which of them would dictate my reality. So when it comes to the health of your family, it is one of the battlegrounds. You know, U.S. election just finished. And towards the election, you were hearing things like the battleground states, swing states, states that if a candidate manages to win, it will swing the election election in their favor, all right? So, for instance, Pennsylvania, all right? Swing state. Uh, is in 19 electoral votes. It was critical. Listen to this and listen very carefully. The health of your family is a swing situation. It takes being alive to be married. It takes being well to enjoy a marriage. So you see the conversation on family health, because if you would have noticed something, since you became a part of this class or signed up to this class, some of the conversations we are making do not sound like the regular premarital preparation or wedding preparation. Because you see, you may have a wonderful wedding, spend $1 million, do a powerful wedding. Hmm? You know you don't want to spend that wedding in a hospital bed or in a health condition. Do you get what I mean? So Satan, news, 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 that is not news. Satan is going to try everything to tamper with your health and the health of your spouse. Another news that is not news. Medical science is good, but medical science has its limits. Completely limited. That's why you have people who are rich they can afford medical science at any level, yet all is not well. So you see, the conversation on our health and the family health is a conversation of faith, all right? And faith itself is practical. So nobody said you shouldn't eat well, eat right. Nobody said you shouldn't take a supplement. Nobody said you should not assess Medicare. Mm -mm, nobody said that. What we are saying is if your foundation is laid outside of a foundation of faith in the finished works of God, then you are on a wrong footing. Because, you see, Satan is the master of looking for what you cannot handle. So if you have resources, Satan will say, okay, can we bring situation that money cannot handle? <laughs> Do you see the point? So you have the money. So Satan said, hmm, let's go to another realm. But you see, when it comes to the life of a believer, we don't respond from a place of fear. We respond from a place of knowing, knowing the liberty we have got in Christ, the foundation on which we stand. All right? So it's so important to understand that, you know, I'm still laying foundation. Dr. Chi is coming to do the teaching with the details. All right? But your family health, write this down, everybody. Write this down, everybody. Your, your health and that of your family is dependent on the state of your faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. So I can say the just will die without his faith. The just shall live by his faith. In essence, without his faith, the just dies. Right? Because he lives by faith. His sustenance is by faith. So you see, your health and that of your family. Because why are we talking about this? You want to enjoy marriage. If you did not want to enjoy marriage, you not sign up for this class. You signed up for this class with a hope. All right? But guess what? 
we can teach you all the wonderful things about enjoying marriage. Then Satan will just say, are you done? Then come for your health. If you have not understood faith in how to handle that area. All right? So it's important that we deploy our faith and learn about these things. All right? So that we can maximize the promise of John 10.10. 10. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. We don't have to spend our marital life in the hospital. We don't have to spend our parenting years going in and out of the hospital. We don't have to regard an allergy from the perspective of medical science and spend our entire life honoring the diagnosis of the doctor. Oh, it's my allergy. It's my daughter's allergy. It's our this. It's our that. Are we saying we will not work with wisdom? We shall work with wisdom. When it's cold, we'll put on the cardigan. All right? When it's cold, we are going to take something warm. We are going to have a hot bath or a warm bath. Yes, we'll do all of that. We are going to eat right. Dr. Chi will teach into some of these things. All right? But here's the deal. I'm not going to allow, all right, a diagnosis or an analysis or uh, anything dictate what I believe. What am I going to believe? What he has finished. All right? Why did he hang on that cross? He took it. See, it's not only sin Jesus took. He took the consequence of sin. So salvation in its full package brings me into a certain kind of liberty. Do you know why I'm sounding like this? If you do not think like this, Satan will make some things feel normal in your home. If you do not think like this, Satan will make, make some things feel normal in your home. So he will throw some conditions around. He will bring some symptoms around. And you're just going to play with them. You, mm, it's the season. Is the season. But it's not written in the word of God that when certain seasons come, Jesus' salvation is withdrawn. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. That's what he says in Philippians. He's telling us to take up a certain kind of mind. All right, in 1 Corinthians 2, it tells us, all right, but we have the mind of Christ. In essence, we must have a perspective to things. This is how you are going to resist some devils. This is how you are going to resist some, you know, diseases Satan will throw around. He'll just throw it around. You know, some headache will just come. It will start like headache. Until you meet a doctor then here, it is an ostomolocosum, blum, 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 blum. They are like, it's just headache. Then they'll tell you, you know, headache is just a symptom of the elem, blum, 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 blum. You know, when the doctor starts speaking that way, you know, confusion begins like, hey, mogbe, yoruba. You hear say? So it's, <laughs> it's so important to understand that I need to know the name before anybody calls a name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows. That's how I'll travel to Isaiah and I'll say, whose report do you believe? Ah, like that good old song, I shall believe the report of the Lord. You see, this is where you come to and you declare on yourself and your family, we live and not die. So declare the works of the Lord. You see, I said there are two realities contending to impose on your reality. I must confess my way into the reality of the kingdom. So it says in Hebrews that we do not, you know, we do not forsake the profession of our faith because it is of great reward. Great reward. All right? So you see, it's so important to first of all get it that the health of your family is first of all dependent on the perspective you have to divine health. The health of your family is first of all dependent on the perspective you have to divine health. You see, why is that so critical? When people respond to a situation, you see what they truly believe. When you see people's response to a situation, you see what they truly believe. Because you go to some Christian homes, yes, they believe in prayer generally. But you see, anytime there's a health attack, first of all, they don't even see it as a planting of Satan. Health crisis is not natural. It's only natural to fall in man. Any health crisis is not natural. The man that God created, see, please begin to see when somebody says something is not natural from the perspective of the spirit, not falling earth. For instance, hope you know fear is not natural. The Bible speaks about fear as the spirit of fear. So you may just say, no, I just, I just don't like the dark. I lie. There's a demon involved. I, I just don't like height. It's a lie. A demon convinced you. And guess what? Do you know why it's so easy 
to be more negative minded in this world than positive minded until you insist. There are more devils than humans. That's my belief. There are more devils than humans. Why do I believe so? I'll give you an example. There are more unbelievers today or people controlled by demonic forces than are, that are believers. And let me take the analysis further. The Bible says when a devil is cast out of a place, he goes around looking for a new host. When he does not find, he will go to the labor market in the spirit. Unemployment exists in the realm of the spirit more than in Nigeria or in America or in South Korea. He goes to the labor market. He realizes that, hey, there are people more qualified than him who still don't have a new house. So he says, hey, guys, come, seven of you, come, 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 seven. He calls seven whose CVs are stronger than his own. He says to them, I am no longer selfish. When a demon is no longer selfish, you know the situation is critical. Come with me and come and share my host with me. Let's go and make the condition worse so that we can force our way in. Now, that's the kind of world in which we live. And you want to play with your mind where you should believe that you must stand on the word to contend. This is where one headache will come and you just be wondering, for God's sake, I've taken Panastamo, I've taken Panadol, I've taken Ibuprofen, I've taken, taken, taken. You see, the guy just went with seven others and came. You know that hammer they are using to hit your head, eh? There are now seven hammers. It was one hammer before. Seven of them are now doing like this. Then rather than you stand on the word, because they respond to the word, you are taking paracetamol. The paracetamol did not work. You took ibuprofen. It did not work. You went to see a doctor. In fact, to compound matters, you know what some of the demons do? When you go to the hospital, all of them will stay outside the gate of the hospital. Then they will run all manner of tests on you. The doctor will say, I cannot see anything. Even you are surprised, the doctor is surprised. Two of you are confused. Then the moment you are driving out of the gate of the hospital, they'll just land on you from outside the gate. The condition will return. Next week, you go back to the hospital. They'll run some further tests. They are wasting your money. Money that you should be sold to other names so that you can go around the world. You are using it to do hospital because you don't want to stand on the word of God. <laughs> Somebody is wondering, is this one still teaching? Yes, I am teaching good. Ah, if I'm feeling that, I'm teaching good. My God. Do you get? You go to the hospital again. They check, they check, they check, they check. They cannot see anything. Then as you are coming out of the gate, they say, my brothers, let's go. It's time. Then they jump on you again. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Am I saying medical science is wrong? No. If you read, you know, God himself gave herbs for the healing of the nation. So here's the point I make. Anything that cannot re respond to God's natural solution is a demonic thing. What do I mean? I give you some natural solution. Stay hydrated, you should be well. Sleep well, you should be well. If you are doing all you should do, eat well, like Dr. Chi will teach, eat as close to nature as possible. Avoid all these chemicals and stuff. Do your best to eat, you know, quality stuff. If you are doing all you should do and the devil still want to plant something in you, that's where you know, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You are now living what is natural in the kingdom I come from. You are trying to impose another nature on me. That's where I begin to say, you know what? It is written, by his stripes we were healed. We are not trying to get healed. By his stripes we were, were his past tense. So I'm supposed to be walking into the reality of what is already done. And somebody may be listening and say, this guy, stop shouting. No. Let's not hear tomorrow you are sick. We are not afraid. Hello? If you meet me in the hospital bed, I will tell you this. Because the only thing that will get me out of the hospital bed will be saying this. I'm telling you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes that's the reason why you are keeping it humble. Because as I'm teaching this thing now, your mind may be going, please, don't shout. You are shouting. Don't shout too much. Don't shout too much. Let's not hear tomorrow. Let me not say this kind of things. Let me not say this kind of things with you. Then tomorrow, I'll not have a headache. Then my friends will now say, where's your gospel? This is actually the only gospel. So I must latch on... And that, do you know, that transaction going on in your heart is not natural. It's the same spirit that wants to make sure you never get the truth that is putting that fear in you so that he can strap your confession and bury your confession so that I can tell you, be careful. Don't talk like that. Even if you want to talk like that, don't talk in public. You know what he's doing? He's luring you out of faith. So don't tell your friends those kind of things. No, 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 no. Keep it to yourselves. Keep it private. Let me tell you, the gospel is too loud to be locked up in your room. The gospel is too loud to be locked up in your heart. You will speak it. 
The Bible says we believe, so we speak. So what should you do? What should you do? Everybody take note of this. Go and invest in the faith because it's by the faith you live. Some of us, we don't have any symptom right now in our life, but we need to carry the word of God there and sit on it as life and death. Because the problem with us believers most times is that we wait for the battle to prepare for the battle. So now that all is well with you, no symptoms to distract you, to cause you, you know, to wonder, is it possible? Is it not possible? No, we are not reading Bible. We are not spending time looking at health scriptures, looking at by stripes we're healed, looking at, you know, um, looking at um, um, when they entered the promised land, none of them was feeble by the promise of God. We're not spending time looking at that. We're just feeling cool. Rather, what we're doing, we're even doing the reverse. So you have taken seven fuzzy drinks in the last seven days, pumping your body with the sugar you don't need, chemicals. Then Dr. Chi will teach us, eat as close to nature as possible. But no, you cannot buy tomato. You buy tomato paste that has just, you know, maybe 15% of tomato and the rest is color, chemicals. And, you know, no, 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 no. You, you, you know, you are looking for Satan to tempt you. You want Satan to come at you. You want that devil to deal with you before you learn how to stand in faith. Because walking in faith includes taking the right action. Because the Bible says faith without work is there. So somebody is listening to me. You are you are fizzy drinks. Oh, you are five and six. If I, when they call you, when they call your name, fizzy drinks answers because fizzy drink is the same as twins with you. So the moment I call your name, they cook in your fridge. You say, "My God, talk to me, baby. Talk to me. Talk to me, baby." Yes, you know, you know yourself. Sugar. At the point in my house, I had to hide the sugar container because some people do not understand the difference between you know. Uh, sweetening something a little and drinking sugar. You know, there's one of our children, there's, there's a local meal we have in Nigeria. For those of you that are not Nigeria, you may not know, it's cassava flakes, as it were. It's Gary, cassava flakes. I grew up technically addicted to it. One of my daughters is showing sign that she's my daughter. She likes the thing. She wants it in the morning. She wants it in the afternoon. She wants it every time. And guess what? We realize that ah, ah, I will buy sugar. The next a few days I'll come. Where's the sugar I bought last week? When I realized that she was not helping her future, I began to help her future. No sugar in my house. And anytime we have to have sugar for a good cause, I keep it in the room. Yes. In our house, sugar is inside the room. We don't keep it out. Because everything is sugar in this generation. You buy coffee, sugar. You buy and, and everything is sugar. So this, this one you are seeing like this? No. So faith without work is dead. Your health will not stand. I see Dr. Chi, good. I'll just wrap up so that she can do the written. Mm, I'm just a learner in this business. You see, faith without work is dead. Some people want to live in health, but their works is ensuring that they, they'll be very sick. You can use your hand to make sure that the sickness will never leave you. I'm telling you. See, I give this story, then I stop. I don't need anybody to preach to me about fizzy drinks. I know a certain reaction my own body gives when I'm abusing sugar. I don't need a preacher. I know it firsthand. God had mercy on me by showing me sign. Me. Like, he allows my body to tell me the truth. So, you see, I have personal incentive to, to stop being stupid. Like, I should all receive sin. Because faith without work is dead. So, when we talk family health, we're not just saying be confessing money tonight. See, if you confess and you don't cooperate, you'll be sick. You must cooperate with your action. Oh, I am the righteousness of God. I am well. I am whole. When you finish taking that nonsense, your body is say, bia, bia, bia. you are not whole anything, you are sick. You will go to hospital. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm not cursing, I'm telling. So your confession must match your conduct. Those two things must go together. There are things you should avoid. There are things you should delete. There are things you should not do. I hope with these few points of mine, as a learning teacher under my Superior teacher, Dr. Chi, on this matter, I can now leave this class alone and allow Dr. Chi to come and teach. <laughs>